Hello everyone. This is a video for the topic of international actors. Who are these international actors? We have seven different kinds of actors. States, IGOs, media, individuals, criminal organizations, MNCs, and NGOs. First of all, we have state. State are institutions that work together inside a territory, having well-established population that obeys a government that is recognized by other states. The state has different elements. First of all, we have population, territory, sovereignty, government, and diplomatic recognition. The definition of state, the concept of state, starts uh, in after the Peace of Westphalia in 1648, where this concept of modern state, the state that we know right now, uh, is conceived. Uh, and we have the concept of sovereignty, that means no intervention, no other country can get inside uh, uh, your country and to tell you what to do. We have right now 196 countries in the world, and we have examples of, of different entities that are not considered uh, countries like that. Uh, examples are Hong Kong, Bermuda, Greenland, Puerto Rico, and the most notably the, uh, the constituent parts of the United Kingdom, which are the Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and England. Those parts are not countries. They are, they are regions that are part of the United Kingdom. And of those 196 countries, we only have 193 uh, in the United Nations. But what's going on with these other three? These other three countries that are not recognized by all countries are Taiwan, the Vatican City, and Kosovo. So which is the newest country in the world? The newest country in the world is South Sudan, which gained independence from Sudan on July 9th, 2011. This happened uh, after... A, as an outcome of a peace deal that was done in 2005 and that ended the longest running civil war in history. So the state has different components. First of all, we have geography. The second is natural resources, population, and strong power and soft power. One side we have strong power that is measurable industrial development, army, and infrastructure. On the other side, we have soft power that is not measurable, that is qualitative. We have national unity, support of the population to the state policies, international image, and international leadership. The second type of actor, of international actor, are the international governmental organizations or IGOs, that's how we're going to be named them. They became important after the World War II. Uh, they um, needed, they, they know that the checks and the balances were needed, and the IGOs uh, normally are concerned with economic issues, with health, security, with all the social issues that were a big problem uh, right after the World War II. In this case, only states can be members. If you're not recognized, if you don't have all the, the five components that we already saw uh, to be a state, you cannot be a part of an international or governmental organization, of an IGO. Uh, and here we have different uh, examples of an IGO. We have NATO, we have the World Health Organization, we have United Nations, we have the APEC, that is the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, and we have the Organization of the American States. The IGOs, uh, they cooperate to solve problems between member states. Uh, one of the main focus, focuses of uh, IGO is to maintain order and to apply rules. They try to maintain a, uh, a order and also to maintain uh, control of what is going on within 
uh, these uh, member states. When they say yes to the internal agreements, they are giving up part of the sovereignty. Let's think of this. As being part of an international government organization, you're now letting other member states, other states, to be part of your decision-making process. Why? Because you are looking for uh, some advice and, or, or some, uh, I don't know, programs that may help your own country. So, in order to be uh, part of this and in order to have this advices and this uh, access to this, those programs that uh, maybe their, their international organizations uh, can have and can help your country, you need to give up some sovereignty. Now we have the non-governmental organizations, the NGOs. They began to appear also after the World War II. The governments do not pay attention to all problems, so the NGOs emerged to try to solve those problems. And most of these NGOs' uh, working force is, uh, are part of a volunteer program. So volunteers are very, very important in order for an NGO to work. The organization has clear, uh, they, they, they had clear objectives and rules. The funding comes from private sponsors. Normally, we, we look at uh, all these corporations, all these businesses, giving support to the NGOs. And they have long-term goals. They're not formed just for a while. They're not formed just for simple or short-term goals. They're looking for problems or situations that may have or may, 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 may have uh, outgrown some problem and may have outgrown some government. So they uh, uh, exist for a long period of time. And they cannot use violence. This, this, this is one of the most important things in the NGOs. They cannot use uh, violence and they cannot be profitable. Some of the most important examples that we have as an NGO is uh, Amnesty International, Greenpeace, Human Rights Watch, CARE, or the OMCT. One of the major characteristics of an NGO is that they influence on global public opinion. They have a strong influence and they can change uh, society and they, they have a huge impact not only society but also in governments. They pressure them and they make them work for all these uh, issues or all these problems that we may see in society. They are uh, the guardian of difficult problems. A huge example are Amnesty International and the Human Rights Watch with all these human rights violations. And one of the most important characteristics of an NGO is that they have no political influence. They have no government interference. And they uh, work in a grassroots level, meaning that they work all the way from the bottom and they, they go up, up, up. They start from the core of the problem and they start to solve the problem all the way from the bottom and then they go all the way up to the government or to the highest level. And they act fast. They need to be in touch and they need to be on the go. They cannot uh, just wait to see if this, the problem is solved. They need to act faster. One of the examples is uh, Doctors Without Frontiers. And, uh, and they, they are one of the biggest examples for act fast because they need to be on the countries that need a huge health support.